Then on the 19th of September, 1940, all the boats were ready. We wanted to go to Gotland because we did not get along with the Russians. At nine o'clock at night, my mother sent me off. I came through the back forest, past the farms to the port. And my brother came. He had knocked out the Germans and cut the telephone wires. And he came with a gun. And in a German uniform, even in his boat, at night we went to Gotland. There were five boats that went out, but only two boats stayed together. Everyone got lost in the dark, but we all got to Gotland. I was at the helm for 18 hours because the boat was too small. And a German convoy came upon us at sea. And we stopped and thought, now they're going to bring us to Germany or who knows where. But they passed us and we started the motors and kept going. And at night we got to Gotland. The Swedish sailors came to greet us with white flags. They were waving the flags constantly. We couldn't get to shore because the shoreline was extremely rocky and wavy. We had a small boat. They waved and walked and waved and walked. And suddenly they stood still and held the flags in a straight line. And we headed straight for them. Of course, the sailors were far away, as far as that distant forest. You see, that's how, the, that's how far the sailors were away from shore. And then we motored straight into shore onto the belts that pulled the boats onto shore, and the children and women were put onto the trucks. But me and my brother and another man, Gusti, with two boats, we went to the port of Lita on Gotland. We got our belongings back. But I was barefoot because I lost my shoes. Barefoot. I went to eat barefoot. I remember that very well. So we, uh, we survived. But we will return for Christmas. We will return for Christmas. It took 60 years. And I traveled through the whole world. But I was young then. And had no worries. And they wouldn't let me return for my mother's funeral. And that's all. My name is Irene, and this is my father, Arvo. My father's life was heavily influenced by the diaspora that occurred in the Baltic country, Estonia, as World War II came to an end and the Iron Curtain closed due to the illegal takeover by the Soviet Union. Clinging to their lives, people from the Baltic nations scattered like marbles all over the globe my father, Arvo, sailed with his brother, Luyu, and his family to Sweden from the tiny island of Vilsandi, Estonia, with hopes that one day they would return to their homeland. Little did my father know, he would return 50 years later as an American citizen. Growing up fishing with my father, I see him as one with the fish he loves. My father is as light as a meal. Bainduf Guyongarias. Eels are long and slender and flexible. So is my father. 
His life's journey flexed him in every direction, all over the world, on the deep blue seas and faraway lands. Eels are catadromous fish, living in freshwater creeks, rivers, lakes, and bays as young elvers and traveling far away to the sea to spawn, returning to the freshwater as adults. Like the eel taking refuge, my father spent some time as a refugee, waiting and hiding until the coast was clear. My father's life journey took him far away from the fresh waters of his home, onto the seas and into foreign lands, where he eventually found his place and his mate on this bountiful blue-green globe. Eels eventually return to the bays they are from. Arvo, after 65 years in exile, returned to his home. After retirement, my father and mother returned to Vilsandi, and with the gracious help and support of family in Sweden and Estonia, purchased back his home for $2,000 and rebuilt his home on Vilsandi Island. My father, Arvo, is as light as an eel. Beindorf we just celebrated my father's 86th birthday. Oh, my God.